This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. L.A. The City of Angels is also the gang capital of the world. That's how gangbang goes. We kill one of them, they come kill one of us. Okay, everybody back up, back up. Did you see who did it? Did you see who did it? Back up, back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. You see everybody's hands. Urban warlords, once organized to protect their neighborhoods, now fight for territory and power. The more streets that you control, the bigger your gang is. And they'll destroy anyone who gets in their way. After I die, the homie's still gonna be talking about the that I've done, and I'm a hood legend. Hundreds of gangs draw battle lines from one neighborhood to the next. They're getting younger and younger. They're getting more violent. And no one sees an end in sight. If they could stop gangbanging, don't you think they would have stopped it already? Gangland. Los Angeles, California. The name conjures up images of a sun-drenched paradise populated by the rich and famous. But beyond the beachfront mansions, designer boutiques, and Hollywood parties is a violent underworld. Its inhabitants live and die in a vast war zone that stretches across LA County, home to more than 900 street gangs. They all control different neighborhoods and fight for domination. We do have some 40,000 gang members in the city alone. Uh, double that uh, in Los Angeles County. Uh, a number uh, that is alarming and frightening. This is one of the most bloodiest places in the world. You know, uh, it's hard to compete with places like Afghanistan. The police want to admit it or not of the mayor. They don't control certain streets. The gang in that area controls certain streets. Whatever gang wrote that up right there, when they, when they put an arrow down, and that means that this area you're standing on belongs to us. I mean, that's what it's all about, to be feared. As long as you're feared, and as long as you can intimidate the community and other gang members, then you can, can more or less con conduct your business however you see fit, because no one's gonna interfere with the way you do things. For every gang, territory, and the drug dealing potential that goes with it are power. Turf boundaries shift as one gang cuts into a rival gang's neighborhood. And to a gangbanger in L.A., your neighborhood is everything. Those neighborhood boundaries can mean the difference between life and death. If you're in a rival gang territory and you say or do the wrong thing, that could be not just your life. If you have your girlfriend, your mom, your sister, your child with you, that could be the end of their life. You got to be aware of where you at at all times and who around you. That's exactly what game banging is. A real game banger admit to you, yes, very paranoid lifestyle. The gang capital of the world is also America's most diverse city. Gangs of all races and color, black, Hispanic, Asian, white, battle with and amongst each other to defend and expand their territories. Fighting, never wanted problems. You know, you have to be that stand-up guy while you're in the game. It ain't no turning down, no fights. It ain't turning down, no turning down, nothing. Dying is part of it. That's the way it has to be. And that's the mentality that even the youngest gang member has. You go out there half-ass gangbanging, you're not going to survive. These turf wars between rival gangs have been fought on L.A. streets for decades. From fighting, they went to shooting, and from shooting, we kill one of theirs or kill one of ours, and back and forth, you know? And it won't stop, you know? Throughout the 1970s, home territory had always been priority to Latino and black gangs. Protect your neighborhood and don't let no one else come destroy your neighborhood. But as gang membership increased throughout the 1970s, guns and the gangs who carried them became a valuable asset for drug dealers. They would employ the gang members for protection, for bodyguards and stuff like that. Drugs would change many black and Latino communities. By the 1980s, gangs saw a lucrative opportunity with the explosion of cocaine use. 
They just cut out the drug dealers and figured why not become drug dealers ourselves. So the gang members started selling the drugs. The gang members stopped chasing out the dope dealers and started becoming dope dealers. Any sense of neighborhood pride fell victim to the dollar. Before then, you had the gang members who more or less were gangsters to protect their neighborhood or to commit acts of violence for their neighborhood. And now the money is involved, the drugs, the money, and the power. So we start slowly forgetting about the morality of the gang. Well, the gang members started uh, preying on the weak. They started becoming the destroyers of the neighborhood. Gangs exploited even greater money-making opportunities with the rise of crack cocaine. Kids who grew up in poverty were moving thousands of dollars worth of drugs a day. By the mid-1990s, the number of gangbangers living in L.A. reached an all-time high of 150,000. And the drug traffic raised the stakes of their turf wars. It became um, who had the most guns, who had the most money, uh, who was rolling the hardest, who had the largest crew. You have to be from that gang in order to participate in that type of uh, financial enterprise. You have to, because you're, you're, you're taking money out of their pocket. If you ain't from my neighborhood, you ain't making money off my neighborhood, you know? If you didn't grow up right there, you're not going to slang to us. L.A. County Sheriff's Department detectives Sean Shaw and Terry Bergen cruise this neighborhood looking for suspicious activity. The Sheriff's Department is on the front lines of the gang war in Los Angeles. They hear a whistle as they turn a street corner. And it's basically they're signaling that there's uh, law enforcement in the neighborhood. So if there's any, anybody doing anything illegal, they'll let them know that there's, you know, sheriffs, sheriff or LAPD, whichever, whoever was over here, is uh, in the area. Here in Los Angeles, the quest for money and power is king. The rich and famous claim their turf in Hollywood and Beverly Hills, while the gangbangers rule South LA. For many from these mean streets, gang life is a form of celebrity. But this fame can come at a heavy price. You join a gang, there's two, two things gonna happen. You're either gonna end up in prison for a long time, or you're gonna end up dead. They're all fighting. At, at any given time, all the gangs in Compton are fighting. The battle lines are drawn, literally, on public walls throughout L.A. Black and Hispanic gangs use graffiti to tag their names to buildings. It's kind of like a warning. So if you choose to come in here, you better be careful how you conduct yourself. Gangs cross out their rivals' names and replace them with their own tags as a call to battle. It's a signal they are making a play for turf. Now they cross you out in, in the walls, you know. That means they want you know. So you go back and tell them what's up and cross them back out or shoot at them, you know. There are people that, you know, they don't value life. They're willing to kill somebody for crossing them out on the wall. In response to statistics of rising gang violence and the murder of innocent victims, Mayor Viragosa released a new plan. The city created the first ever list of the 10 most wanted gang members. The hope was that the public would help police identify and arrest gangbangers. On its release, the list and the mayor drew criticism. Gang members say that for every top 10 banger who's caught, more will commit crimes to make it onto the list. To them, it's a badge of honor. A lot of people are not scared to be on the top 10. You know, if anything, they want to be on the top 10. I'd like to see my hood up there with everybody else. <laughs> you know, it's like a plaque on the wall. Law enforcement working the streets say that more than any top 10 list, the real solution to L.A.'s gang problem lies in the communities. In the neighborhoods where these people live at, they know who's committing the crime. They know who the top 10 are. So what good would it do for me to print out a list of these are the guys in the neighborhood committing the crimes? They know, they just won't tell us. According to many former gang members, the cops are right. Neighborhood loyalty is at the heart of the problem. 
Bangers, both black and Hispanic, say the violence stops when gang members reach the point where defending their neighborhood is no longer a priority. L.A. may never shake its status as gang capital of the world. Beyond the Hollywood Hills, alliances continue to form as tensions build between Hispanic and black gangs. For all the gangsters who leave the game, there's a new generation ready to die for his neighborhood with no end in sight. You have a younger crew that lives in the neighborhood and then they want to carry on the uh, tradition of the neighborhood. You're not going to get rid of the gangs. It's not going to happen. If they could have done it, they would have did it 20 years ago. You know, it's easier to get weeds out of your yard than it is to get gangs out of your community. 